thank you all so much for being here. And I, said, I was listening in the wings, and it seems that there's some animal lovers in the house. Yeah? yeah. 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 Woo! All right, if you're a dog lover, say dog. 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 Cat lover? Cat. Woo! Horses? Horses. 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 Birds? Birds. Snakes? Yes. yes. Oh, yeah, all right, I love it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, thank you for coming today. Um, and thank you for loving animals. I, it, one of my friends says that animals are angels on loan to us. And I think that's true. And in fact, in my work, I've been doing this since 93 professionally. They, they're angels. They're guides, they're healers, they're teachers. And what we don't know is how incredibly intelligent they really are. You know, they say that uh, humans are spiritual beings having a human experience, right? We're in a human body. And I believe that's true of animals as well. Animals are spiritual beings having an animal experience. So if you think of your intelligence and how you feel and you think and how you reason and process and you experience life, they do too in their own way, in their own way. Um, I love animals. I've loved them since I was little. Um, and right now, I'm really delighted because I get to help people all around the world who are struggling with their pets, who don't understand each other. They are in conflict. We've got uh, one of my specialties is solving problems with pets. So behavior and health and uh, performance with show horses, which is actually how I got started way back when. But it, what I want you to know today is that animals are smarter than you think. They listen to you, they feel you, they know who you are. They get you at a very deep level, yeah? They're heroes. Have you heard stories about the, like the little dog that the, the cobra was going after the child and this little dog ran and got in front of him and it attacked the cobra and it fought with him until the child could, it, could get away to safety? Did you see that? Yeah, oh my God. And then there was this picture of it, you know, the dead snake, um, and the dog is sitting there with this smile on its face, dying, because it had been bitten so many times by the cobra. You know, that was its life's mission. It was the angel in that moment for that child, right? So they touched my heart. You know, I, I, one of the reasons I want to be on this stage is to tell people, wake up, animals are intelligent, they're sentient, they feel, they know more than you do, right? All you have to do is communicate with them. And guess what? They communicate. Did you know they communicate? You're shaking your head. You heard, have you heard an animal speak to you? Have you felt a message? Yes, all the time, right? All the time. It's we humans that are so dense that we're not open and connected, you know? We, we're not like... We're like this talking head in our society and we don't even feel, we don't even know what we're feeling in our body. We don't know what we're doing with our energy, you know. Um, and animals look at us and they go, oh my God, I'm so worried about my person. Because <laughs> they're like clueless. And so um, there's a phenomenon I call the human-animal body-mind connection. And it's a really interesting, it's, it's where animals mirror us. They mirror us, they act out our stress our wounds. They carry our illnesses, our sickness. Um, I learned about this from one of my dear friends and colleagues. She's a um, best-selling author, Susan Chernick McElroy. She wrote a book called Animals as Teachers and Healers. And from her own story, she, her dog, I think it was a golden, um, wound up with a very rare cancer. Um, and uh, the dog taught her how to survive cancer, how to go through this, and she learned so much by being with her dog through this experience. Her dog died, and then they discovered that she had the exact same cancer. And she knew from what she had gone through with her, her dog how to do this. It's like, oh my God, it's, it's not a, you know, I, I don't know if I'll die or not, but I, I have courage. I'm gonna step in, I'm gonna step up. You know, and I'm going to face this because my dog taught me how, how to step up and show up. And she survived her cancer. So her dog was her angel, right? So there are 
something like, uh, if I can remember my notes, something like 7.2 million animals, I think it translates to 27,000 animals every day that wind up at the shelter. 27,000 lives every day of intelligent, sentient, feeling, wise ones who are misunderstood. Nobody ever communicated with them. They were acting out and trying to help their person, right, by saying, you know, you have a stress here. You have a wound here. You're sick here. You're here. Let me show it to you so maybe you'll get it. Maybe you can, uh, you can take action. You know, they'll, they'll come to you and they'll go, Right, right here, mom, right here, right here, right here, right here. Right here. Have you ever had an animal come to you and like be, uh, point to this area in your body? Thank you for saying, yeah. Yeah, they, they, they do, they can smell illness inside our body. Sometimes they're the ones that say, ah, get to the doctor quick, right? There's something wrong here. Or they get sick first. To me, it's really tragic to see all those animals lose their lives. And that's not counting the ones that are abused and lost and tossed out of cars, you know, and uh, just like abandoned, just dumped, right? So once upon a time, there was a horse named Detiza. She was an Arabian, a beautiful, beautiful Arabian mare who was with people who did not understand her and did, never took time to communicate with her. And she was highly opinionated, a bit aggressive. She was, had an attitude. This horse had an attitude, imagine that. She wound up being abused. Um, she almost lost her life. She was in very bad shape and she wound up at a horse rescue facility in upstate New York uh, with one of my colleagues. Her name was um, Dawn and Dawn is a communicator. And so Dawn is talking to Detiza and she's wanting her story. It's like, so how did you get here? What's going on with you? Why are you so aggressive? Why are you so dangerous? You know, how can we help you? Because this isn't going to work here if you hurt us or hurt the other, you know, um, animals here. And Detiza said, I am a wise one. I have never been respected or acknowledged. I know how to heal people. And they went, what? And she said, yeah, for instance, and she told Dawn something about her own health. And she said, you know, here's what you do to feel better. Wow, okay, and so the word started getting out, and some of the volunteers are working with her, they're, and they're like, oh my God, this horse knows, the advice she told me was right on. How did she know? Do y'all remember Edgar Casey? Anybody remember Edgar Casey? Detiza had the gift of Edgar Casey. She became famous. People would go to her and ask her for advice. I mean, doc <laughs> Um, our doctor in the audience here, it's like they would go to her um, and, and she would uh, be translated, of course, communicate, and she would say, you know, you have a problem with your pancreas and you have a problem with your, uh, you know, your kidney or, you know, whatever, and then take these herbs, do, do whatever it is you had to do. And, um, and they would do that and they would feel better. Extraordinary. Who knew? Right? The people who had to tease her before and they're abusing her. Who knew that who they had in their life, you know? Wow. So I want to challenge you today, and I, maybe not a challenge, but I want to invite you to consider who are animals really? Who are, who are they really? You know, at this point, you know, I have a mission, I have a vision. My vision is a world where everyone can communicate with animals, where we all understand each other. I think when we do that, the world will be a better place for all of us, you know? When we learn to recognize and respect and revere them for who they truly are as the master spiritual teachers that they are, they make us better people. And God knows we need to be better people, right? The best version of ourself. So um, anyway, so I hope that if you don't go away with anything else today, I want you to go away with that. Um, but there are some things animals would tell you if they could. Um, one of them is, they're intelligent, I hope you got that point. Uh, two, um, they worry about you, um, they do, they, when we're not fully present and consciously aware, which most of us rarely are, um, they worry about us because it's not safe, right? It's not, it's not safe to not be fully present in your life right here, right now. So they'll do whatever they can to get your attention.
they feel, they feel greatly. Um, they feel emotions, they feel uh, thoughts, they feel um, sadness, grief, depression. So many research studies have proven this over and over and over. Um, animals are super intelligent and they do feel. They mirror you, they can mirror you. So if you're having a problem with an animal, you need to talk to them because it may not be their problem, it may be yours that they're acting out for you, right? So find out what's going on first uh, before you make any decisions about what to do. So um, let me tell you how I got started. Uh, so uh, imagine a, a tow-headed little girl living in rural Texas outside Lake Austin, outside Austin, Texas. Um, and I, it was a really lonely only child. I didn't have any playmates, any, no human uh, kids uh, for miles and miles around. It was very, very isolated. The only friends that I really had were the animals. And I was known for being able to befriend the wild animals. You know, the, we had dogs, I had guinea pigs, they had, you know, uh, chickens, we had pig pigs. But my bestest best friend was a mare named Maisie. Uh, Maisie was a big, uh, a good, good sized chestnut mare with big black mane and black feet and black tail. And she was so near and dear to my heart. And, when I, be, when, it, when I started into my teenage years, um, I was manically depressed and I was suicidal. So after my parents would go to, to sleep at night, I would sneak out of the house and I would go to the barn and I would go to Maisie and I would throw my arms around her neck and I would cry into her mane. And she would look at me with those big liquid brown eyes and she would wait patiently until the worst of it had passed. Um, and then she would tell me, she, I would hear her voice, and she would say, child, what's wrong? And I would tell her. And her counsel and her wisdom and her um, philosophies of life. Um, sometimes she would make me laugh. And she was so funny. She had a great sense of humor. Along with a pair of lips that could open any gate, she had a great sense of humor. Uh, but she would, you know, she'd always counsel me, and I survived my teenage years. I, I, and I attribute that in large testament to Maisie in my life. And I went on, and I went into corporate, the corporate world, and I wound up going to college. I got married, and I, and I was not in a good marriage, um, and I was depressed, becoming suicidal again, and starting to look at what am I doing with my life? Um, and I forgot I could communicate with the animals until one day my husband and I had two cats and he was a professional opera singer, a tenor, um, and he had these giant Bose speakers and they were using the speakers as scratching posts. <laughs> not good, really not good. Um, so I was really worried. I was thinking, oh my God, they're going to lose their life, you know, um, or they'll lose their home at a minimum, right? And so one morning I get up and I'm going to do my meditation that morning and I'm tuning in and something just kind of downloaded to me and it said, instead of tuning inward, does anyone meditate here? Anybody else meditate? Yeah, yeah, good. A few of you do. Good. Um, so instead of tuning inward, in fact, y'all can try this. Instead of tuning inward, tune toward the animal and see what happens as an experiment. Because I did that that day and I tuned in to the animal and to the cats, um, and I saw things. Oh my God, I saw images I had no, no clue about. I heard voices, I felt feelings, I heard thoughts. It was so extraordinary. Um, and so I'm going through this process, and, all, and it was, all of a sudden it was like complete, and I'm like, wow, and I opened my eyes, and the two cats were like glued, glued looking at me, both of them like, like you know. Um, <laughs> It was like, wow, and we took a big breath together. Wow. And they never used the speakers as scratching posts again. That was it. So um, I, I went on to work with Valkyrie. Uh, Valkyrie was a black Percheron mare, a black beauty of a horse. She had this huge knot in her hip. And I was out there working with her. It was a cold, uh, kind of a rainy day in, in uh, January in San Antonio, Texas, and I'm at the stable, and it's just me and her and her owner. And at one point, Valkyrie told me what happened to her hip. It was like, uh, did you know that they can take you into their, uh, it, um, their memories? 
So they can take you into their mind and they can show you where, what they know, what they saw, what they felt, what they experienced, what they thought. And so she did that and it was like I was sucked into her mind and her, into her head. And I saw where she was. She was there. I smelled the caliche dirt. I saw the gate. I, thought, I saw the horse trailer. I saw the three Hispanic men that were trying to load her in the horse trailer. It was really pissing her off. Um, and how she was fighting them because she didn't want to go in there. I mean, she banged into that gate. And when she did, she banged her butt. So, and then after, you know, I listen to the story and I'm translating it as quickly as I can. And, um, and, and Charlene, her owner, said, oh my God, I remember that incident. I remember when that happened. I know exactly what she's talking about. I'm so sorry that happened that way. And at that moment, Valkyrie felt acknowledged and heard. And she could let it go. And she took this big breath. <gasps> you know? Um, and the knot melted out of her hip it was gone so you know they know they know things you don't know um, imagine if you will just a real quick little exercise imagine you're an animal let's say for the dog lovers uh, for the cat lovers the the horses the birds whatever think of a of an animal and imagine that you're them how would life be if you were that animal how would it feel your viewpoint would change. Your senses would enlarge. They, they have much better senses than we humans. I've had animals tell me what pitiful orbs my eyes were, which <laughs> I had a peregrine falcon tell me that. Thank you very much. <laughs> Just imagine a world where they could communicate with us and we could communicate with them. What amazing things they could tell us. How could they help us? How could they help you? Right? How could you help them? What we have when we do that is team and partnership and an expanded sense of life and being reconnected to life because companion animals spend their whole life trying to break through your barriers to help you evolve and heal and grow. So the next time you see an animal, remember, smarter than you think. You can communicate with them. So thank you for loving animals. Thank you.